Ah, let's do it, guys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. Today is the 50th day of the year 2019 also known as February 19th, 2019. <laughs> First on our agenda is uh, introduction of members, beginning with Mr. Warburton, please. Brian Warburton. Where's it going? My name's Jones. Mike Plouffe. Bob Ladd, Village Mike District Jones. Representative. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Stephen LeBranch. Great. Thank you all. Uh, we have a bunch of wise people here tonight. Uh, Jay Dean is going to make a presentation shortly. We have two of the commissioners sitting at the table who are going to present their budget shortly thereafter. And of course, we have wisdom in our audience as well with Nancy Stiles and Richard Rainier. Not to mention the stellar reporter from the Hampton Union. Uh, <laughs> Max Sullivan, I yeah. believe his name is. <laughs> okay. Uh, old business information requests. There are none as far as I know. Jerry, is that correct? Old business? No, no I'm under not. information requests. No. no. No information requests, so there's no change in status on information requests. Okay, great. Nothing under other old business? Great, thank you. Jay Dina, you're up. Thank you. And thank you all for making time for me this evening. I'm here representing the Seaport Camptons Estuary Alliance, and I'm asking for your participation in an effort to investigate some of the flooding issues that have been going on in Hampton. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background about uh, what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Um, last summer, the Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance, otherwise known as SHEA, held a series of three workshops in Hampton, primarily for residents to address some of the issues that had been raised regarding flooding. Uh, there were a lot of people who had come to us and various other organizations with a lot of questions about flooding issues, what to do about it without having either answers or knowing the resources that they could go to to get those questions asked. So we held three workshops in June, July, and August. They were well attended with about 50 to 60 people at each of the workshops. Um, and it was a good start to the process. Um, we also applied for a grant from the Consensus Building Institute in Massachusetts to start the process of identifying flooding adaptation strategies that Hampton may want to consider. Um, and the first part of that project was to hire an outside consultant, a, uh, an outside planner, who helped us to develop a situation awareness. And that involved putting together a questionnaire that was distributed to residents around town to get their impressions of what was happening related to flooding, what, what they thought the causes were, what the impacts were in their neighborhoods and on their properties, what they thought they could do about flooding, what they thought the town should do about flooding. Um, and it was really an interesting process and a, and a real eye-opener to find out what our townspeople, what our neighbors thought about, think about uh, the flooding issues that they're experiencing. Um, the second portion of that process uh, that finished out phase one was to convene a group that we're calling CHAT, which is the Coastal Hazards Adaptation Team. And CHAT is comprised of members of the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Planning Board, the Zoning Board, uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and the Hampton Beach Village Precinct. We also have a representative of the Department of Public Works um, and the Town Planner as part of CHAT. And what we're in the process of doing is further investigating the causes of flooding, the various adaptation strategies that might be available in the town of Hampton, looking at the funding that might be required to implement those, um, those different strategies and where that funding may come from, and also the, the implementation, implementation process should the town choose to adapt some of those implementation strategies. We've just gotten started. We, we just had our second meeting this afternoon. We expect this to be probably a year-long process. Uh, we think it would be of tremendous value to the chat process as well as to the town to have the budget committee represented as well in this process. Mm. Um, now, we currently have um, Regina Barnes on the Board of Selectmen, who is their representative to the budget committee on, as part of chat, and also Bob Ladd from the precinct, 
Um, village district, please. I'm sorry, village district precinct. Um, uh, representing them on the budget committee. So our thinking was you could choose to, and this is entirely up to you obviously, you mm -hmm. could choose to let them, assuming they continue to be their respective boards uh, representative to the budget committee, represent the budget committee as well in the chat process, or choose to have somebody else be a part of that process. But again, <coughs> we think it would be a value for for the process mm -hmm. itself and for the budget committee as well as the town to have the budget committee represented. So because we will be talking about <coughs> funding requirements, uh, we don't know what is going to be needed to fund these various tactics. We don't know where that funding is going to come from, although we will be investigating that. Uh, we don't know how much of it may come from the federal government, how much mm -hmm. of it may come from the state, how much of it would come from the town. Um, we think you would want to be aware of that as we go through mm -hmm. this process. So that's my request. We meet roughly once every month, once every two months. Um, and I think it's a good team. Um, and I think it's a team that's energized and is interested in helping the town find solutions to what we're learning is an increasing and uh, an increasing problem dealing with coastal flooding issues. And I don't know if, if Regina or Bob, if you have anything to add to that. Well, I just say we, as the village district, we totally endorse this group and it, what it's trying to accomplish. And Jay's pretty well laid out its mission statement. So the uh, representation from the budget committee is for the Chad activity? Chad, right. Chad, is it Chad or Chat? C H A T. T. Chad. Okay. Coastal Hazard Adaptation Team. So you'll be looking for a chatter from the budget committee, then, huh? so to speak. <laughs> There's a lot of chatters on this committee. <laughs> Any uh, questions uh, on this topic from anybody? Yeah, I, uh, uh, Jerry. Yeah, sure. Did we have a warrant article in the zoning uh, part by the zoning board to raise the houses up a foot or more if they wish, uh, if they're living in a marsh area, if you supposedly mm -hmm. in whatever areas have been identified? So there's an action that's there on the ballot this March. Right. Uh, this, and then we have a warrant article or two to deal with studying a flooding on Kings Highway or <coughs> one other area as well. Uh, yes. How does that meld into what you um, That is a part of the process. Jen Hale from the Department of Public Works is part of the chat team. Um, they are in the early stages of doing the, that research um, through the two engineering firms that they contracted uh, via that warrant article. Um, so you'll be incorporating their findings or their research into your, so you want to duplicate that effort? No, definitely not. And, and what they're doing is they're looking pretty much at two specific neighborhoods. Yeah. They're looking at Green Gentian and the drainage issues that they're having in that area. And they're looking down at Hobson, Manchester, the backside of Ashworth Avenue to look at the flooding in, in those areas. I see. We're going to be looking in, at those areas as well as the beach and the town as a whole. Yeah. We certainly need a, a good plan for that. I mean, we, you know, flooding, is, you know, we get the weather changing, we get tidal change, water changing, and then mm -hmm. there's an argument about how high the water is going to go. I've mm -hmm. heard two feet or three feet over 50 years, and I've heard two or three times that over 50 years. So uh, that has to be understood. There are different projections, and I think one of the things that we want to look at is if the town wants to adopt any of these adaptation strategies, what's the trigger point yeah. at which you say, okay, we have to go down that road? Because you're right, we don't know exactly how high the water is going to rise or exactly when. There are projections, and there were projections that were issued as early as 2014, right. 2015, and, and, that's, that's and those are pretty accurate. Those are important. And those are being what you put your strategy in place and what to do as a sure. result of it. I mean, you gotta, you got to have... It's like it's us with, with the, the ocean, the beach wall there is like 17 feet high, I think. Mm -hmm. And the, the wall we're thinking of eventually rebuilding by the, the old lighthouse area, whatever it was, uh, the lifeguard station Coast or the Coast, Coast Guard station uh, was, is going to be built that high too, I think, eventually uh, uh, when we do get around to rebuilding it. So is that enough? <laughs> Depends on how far you want to look. Uh, so, um, yeah, the Coastal, as we learned today, the Coastal Risks and Hazards Commission did some projections when that report first came out. They're going to be updating their projections probably by the end of this year. 
So we're going to have updated numbers on where we think well, sea level It's good to have a, a global look at this in terms of how we're affected. Uh, as it's not, it really sure. Is because the study in one area or the other doesn't really cover, cover the whole spectrum which we need to cover. So it sounds good. Thanks. It's, it's going to be an interesting process. It's going to be a challenging process, but we agree that One it's that should be done fairly really and accurately is in order to get the support of, of, of all. Sure. You know? And that's why we want to have all of these important boards and commissions and, and departments represented as part of CHESS. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Anybody else? Bob? No, I, we have two members. We have three. Then we could break a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. LaBranch. Well, there are only three people in this room that are going to be able to uh, volunteer for this. And it's myself, Mike Plouffe, and Brian. Now, I know you two guys still work <laughs> during the day, so... Um, well, we work all the time, so Jerry I'm and, the day. Well, let, me, let me point out something to you, Steve. First of all, he's asking for a representative to the budget committee. It doesn't right. necessarily mean a budget committee member. He's asking the budget committee to select a person to represent the budget committee. We would like it to be a budget committee member. Yeah. Okay. And, and, sec I'll, and, I'll second, volunteer. and secondly, or or a department representative on the budget committee. And, and secondly, um, this budget committee terminates after this meeting. Basically, uh, we have a new budget committee uh, starting up next month, and it's probably best for that budget committee to decide. Uh, is is there any reason why we should speed up that process, Jay? Um, it's your call. Um, no, there's there's not a real need for it. Okay. You know, like so. I said, Regina and Bob are, are mm -hmm. currently members of CHAT. Um, if you want to choose another representative, that's fine, and, and they, I'm sure, can bring that person up to speed. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense to just wait for the new committee to decide who the reps will be. It'll probably be you ultimately anyway, but... <laughs> Whatever the case. I mean, are you meeting between now and the election? Um, no. There you go. It makes no sense to appoint someone now. So, and we meet a, um, a week after the election, or rather, the budget committee meets a week after the election, and presumably, when they do the reorganization, they can decide on the representative at that time. When is your next meeting, Jay? It is the nineteenth, I think. I think so. That's the night we meet. That's, that's the night we meet hmm. after the election. Yeah. yeah we'll be meeting before you. <laughs> so, in that case, I would again volunteer as a member okay. of this budget yeah. committee and then uh, then when they meet on the 19th if they decide to have somebody else do it that's fine with me but I would <laughs> like to be at that next meeting and I'll miss it because you're going to have it during the day right? it's at uh, we usually meet at three o'clock yeah perfect so so we're looking there you go. so Mr. LeBranch wants to be the representative for one month Mm -hmm. uh, is there any objection? I, I don't even have a problem making Mr. LaBranch a, the representative Well, you can deal now. with that next month. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. No objection to making him the rep now no. for one month, no. right? Okay, so you are the representative. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Thanks, Stephen. Stephen. Send me an email to remind me. You have my I will make it official in March. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I'm there. So I'll know where to Just go, kidding. you know, exactly where the meeting is. And stuff. Steve, how close uh, are you to the marsh? <laughs> yeah, over, I'm very close to this so whole you, thing. So you, you, you. I have a big uh, I have got a dog some, in this. Some, uh, yeah, I have a dog you in this. You've got to hide in this thing. For sure. Is there a king moon on the 19th? He's, he's already, he's already been moon. appointed, so it's not an issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The closer you are to the marsh. You all set? You all done, Steve? Anybody, everybody all set now? Yeah, all set. Jay, I just want to make an observation if I could. Um, <clears throat> I guess two observations. One is places around the world have been dealing with flooding for a long time, mm -hmm. like Amsterdam, for example, which has been under sea level for a long, long time. And I hope someone is looking at how they've been able to manage being under sea level uh, for <laughs> many decades, I think hundreds of years, actually. Um, so I hope they're looking at Amsterdam as a good example to, uh, to learn from. And the other issue I have is something that I raised in the Selectman's campaign, which was the dredging of the harbor. We wanted to dredge the harbor apparently only for commercial reasons, for shipping lanes. When in reality, we should also be acknowledging that that harbor is uh, a place to store that excess water. And the problem is that that harbor fills up with sand, and it's filling up with the sand faster than ever. And I believe one of the major reasons that that's filling up with sand is because they're narrowing the channel out to the ocean. And just like a garden hose, when you squeeze it, the same amount of water is going to come out, but it's going to come out you know, faster, more at a greater velocity. And it's going to carry anything there faster out with it. And that's what happens when you narrow the channel <coughs> in the Hampton River. 
you narrow that down, you're making the water go faster both in and out, and it's carrying all that sand faster. And that's why I believe that the harbor is filling up faster than it has in the past. I think we should be looking at dredging the harbor not just for commercial reasons, but also as a matter of flood control. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's good. I appreciate uh, that. I, um, that's a good input. I won't get into the causes of the sand infiltration in the harbor, but I, but I can tell you that we have discussed and, and looked at what impact dredging is going to have on flooding, mm -hmm. and it's, gonna, it's not really going to have any impact because water is going to seek its own level regardless of how yeah. deep the harbor is. And as long as you've got the ocean at this level, um, if you make the harbor deeper, that doesn't mean the, the water in the harbor is going to be at this level. It's still going to be at the same level. You're just going to have more water. More water is going to come in through that opening. And it's wow, so you're saying harbor. that actually a deeper harbor would be more problematic? No, I'm, I'm saying that it's not going to have a material effect one way or the other huh. as far as flooding issues are concerned. Huh. Okay. So it wouldn't matter if we concreted the entire march, we still have the same flooding problem. No, that would be a real problem. Okay, so that <laughs> does have an impact. Well, somehow. that would have a real problem because the marsh absorbs water. It's like a giant sponge. And well, if you, you cement it, it over, then the you entire lose harbor, water. which is not the marsh. Yeah, you need it would marsh. Not, not have any effect, you say. Um, Relative to flooding. Marsh well, you'd in fact be creating a dam. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Which may be exactly what we need now. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? Okay. Any other questions for Jay? No. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, I look forward to hearing from your reports from Steve and others. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On to everyone's favorite entity, the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, we've got two Money Warren articles. They're both Budget Warren articles. For those who do not know, just to be clear, the Hampton Beach Village District actually has not one but two budgets. Um, one is for the general government side of the world, and the other is for the so-called cultural and recreation side of the world. They're two separate budgets. And so we'll be dealing with each of them separately. So Article 2 is to raise uh, $66,180 for the general government, which everyone in the Village District pays taxes for. Um, any questions, issues, or whatever? Yeah, I have some. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, this is about the second time, maybe the third, that I've seen a budget like this, <laughs> really. It's usually uh, municipal or schools, or, or 21, I say 21, I say 90. Okay, the, um, in the general government, first section, first section. First, before you start, Yeah. I would like to thank you all for having us. I'm Chuck Rage, and this is Maureen Buckley. We're both commissioners of the Hampton Beach Village District. So I didn't want to interrupt you, but so people at home know who you're talking to. Yeah. Uh, we watch you on television. Everybody <laughs> knows Chuck and Maureen. Give me a break. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I take a look at this quickly, and I see that it's up 30% from the three-year averages. When I see your 66,780. Three-year average is about 51k, and you're going up to 66. That's a jump of about 30 percent. But and looking at the line items, the 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 general government um, is that uh, uh, is that for people who have declared themselves exempt? From yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah. So I'm looking at the line items, and are these line items germane to the to the general government, or are they? Uh, or, or not? I mean, are they are they really like legal? For instance, is this the only line item? I don't see legal up here anywhere else down below in the culture and rec section. Why do I only see legal up in the general government? For um, instance, that's where it's always been. It's uh, I know you love that. Uh, but most of the legal activity pertains to to doing our uh, yearly uh, meetings. To have the me actual meeting, but and does it mostly it pertain important. to the expenses shown under culture and recreation? I mean, the way you have it here, almost every one of these line items uh, could be construed as just simply germane to the exempt folks. And yet, I don't know if that's true or not. And I look at things like uh, maintenance of the playground and and. Uh, Insurance doesn't show up down below. What kind of insurance is that? General uh, uh, so liability. Liability insurance. For, for, for everything. 
for everything, yet it shows up totally only one area, and that's in the general government. So I, I guess uh, I look at every one of these line items and I say to myself, are they simply germane to the general government or should they be shared? Because I look at the well, culture. Everybody, every, everybody pays that on the general government. All the businesses as well pay both. So everything is paid. That small amount is probably a couple cups of coffee that the people are paying uh, a month in that in that. Well, if the, if the businesses are paying, the businesses are paying. Aren't they simply? Everything. Aren't they represented down here as well, though? Why would they're they? paying both? They pay both. So this is divided up by everybody, and this is divided up by just the. Okay, you take legal chuck. You got eight. You got six thousand dollars showing in the proposal. I don't see legal down below at all. Right. So when it was when when originally everybody paid their fair share. And then uh, they decided that they would split up into two different warrants, and this was all done through legal and through the um, the legislature. So they basically picked what would be uh, in the general government budget uh, well, uh, well, originally. So, and we've just gone by that same budget for. But and when, then when it, you say originally, you're talking 1903 when no, no, no <laughs> when it was split. When it was split, 1979. It was split. I thought it was done in the 70s. Yeah. So. Uh, but in fact, you were one budget, but there were two distinct tax rates, even back then. Right. You were you were processing one budget. Right. DRA said, "Wait a minute. That you've been doing it that way. You've always done it that way, and it's wrong. You yeah. need two separate budgets." That's what DRA said. That's why you have two separate budgets today. It hasn't affected the taxes in any respect at all. There's I no don't believe that that that's no. I don't believe that no. What am I missing? It was it was to to there were people that were upset that they were they were year round residents so they they split up the the budget. Yeah, that's so when they created the exempt non exempt exempt, thing. Yeah, but DRA but there was only never, one budget even then. But DRA split it evenly to all the people. They, they made two budgets. Back in the day, I think the only yeah. other budget would would have been uh, no, no. Like DRA. Utility. Was it three years ago, Steve, when they put the software in that they required the two budgets? It's only been three or four years, yeah. tops. It's when they, it's when they put in the, uh, the new software, software yeah. that they required me to actually have two separate budgets. It has. That's the way it. It's the, the way software, it should have been anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then the, the software. It's the only way we could make it work. Right. They weren't going to customize the software just for the village district in Hampton, but. That's why we do it with two budgets. It's been like the last four years that we've had. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Your two budgets are relatively new, three or four right, years old. I thought old. you were talking about the exempt the, concept. The, the, the exempt yeah. concept is decades old. Yeah. And, that, and, and so that's what, that was the point I was trying to make. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I, like I could it. shed a little light on Go that. Ahead, how, how did the floor get taken from me? Uh, well, I'm just trying to get clarification on that one point, and apparently there's more clarification coming. So okay. you'll have the floor back, Jerry. In well, the late 1970s, Senator Preston introduced legislation which allowed a distinction between the commercial and the residential pieces of the village district. So, because there was co some concern at that time that the residents were underwriting commercial activities to an extent they didn't particularly want it. So that the genesis of the two classes in taxation arose <coughs> out of that legislation, and it seems to yeah. work very well. We're, we're in agreement on okay. on that historical note. Yeah. Um, go ahead, uh, Jerry. Well, yeah, that being the case, though, Bob, it doesn't look to me like uh, what you said is true here, because I look at these line items, and I don't see any proportional amount down in the culture and recreational area. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I can clarify this a little bit, Jerry, if you'd like. Your question. And, I mean, I see accountants and auditors for 80 uh, 8850 8, accountants and auditor and I say to myself does the exempt population really are they financing the total amount for accountants and auditors and I look down here under the culture in a uh, large article 3 here I don't see accountants and, <coughs> and uh, auditors anywhere so it looks to me like they're subsidizing the whole line item the whole uh, dollar amount I just want to speak on the legal part of it okay okay sure. <clears throat> A couple of years ago when we purchased that new parking lot from Clues, there was a lot of legal activity going on. Yeah. A lot going on between the town, between our own lawyer, yes. uh, getting things done. And when it was billed, 
it was specifically billed for, it was broken down, okay? So that particular year, I actually had, you, when, when she would bill me, if it was general government only, it was billed general government, and that's where it was paid from, this account. Now, what happened is that with so much activity that particular summer, that it was going to, we were gonna go over budget, general government. So I called the DRA and I said, what am I gonna do? Because we can't go over budget. And she said, what's generating all this, you know, why, what's generating this problem? And I said, well, it's all the activity that has to do with the parking lot yeah. that we purchased. Yeah. And she told that they got on the, a supervisor got on the line as well to tell me what to do. And they said, you go back to January 1st and you identify all of the stuff yeah. which had been identified. It's just that I wasn't paying it that way. And she said, you apply the stuff that has specifically to do with that parking lot. You apply it under the culture and recreation where you see parking lot and put it under supplies, et cetera. And I did. Oh, okay. And the problem went away immediately. <clears throat> okay. So that did happen it only happened a few years ago to answer your question i see the supplies okay so that <laughs> in, the, in that <laughs> case it happened yeah, i just want to make yeah, sure you understand okay. that we should have had a line item that said parking it was parking lot or something that's very interesting if i may jerry i need to get clarification here yeah steve um i understand there was a law that was slipped in at the last minute several years ago where the parking income uh belongs to cultural and recreation and the parking expenses, namely payroll particularly, actually belongs to the general government. Is that true or not true? No. It's not true. No, no it's, it's just the, the way you lot. have it. It's right here. If you look at the thing in the parking lot. No, payrolls. no, the payroll and the right we fixed there was a problem a it couple of years. It was that ago. way, but it's been fixed. We fixed okay, that. Good. All right. Several thank you, years thank ago. you for that. Sorry, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean uh, <clears throat> so it is a town meeting form of government. We actually uh, vote on the budget and that any time anybody can go and make a motion to move something from one to the other and no one has of that particular item. So people have tried other items and it hasn't gone through. Yeah. Jerry, continue. Yeah, I, I was looking at legal and right now what you're requesting is $6,000 which is about 156% higher than the three year average which is what caught my eye. So, uh, I, I just, uh, and I look at other things here. Insurance uh, is another line item that jumped. Uh, uh, well, it may not have jumped, but you're asking for 17.5. Yet I don't see insurance anywhere down here under culture, <coughs> and, culture and rec. Uh, I don't get the impression that this culture and rec is 13 times bigger in dollars than the general government. Yet I don't see a proportional amount of money down here. To, to, to take some of these other items and to, to show sh that there's some sharing going on. That's my impression. Okay, okay that's it. Uh, anything else, Jerry? No. All right, I didn't hear any questions in there. Does anyone else have any comments, questions? If I would just comment on Jerry's comment. Uh -huh. The reason it is the insurance item is in general government is almost all of these activities are self-insured by the presenters. Okay. This is primarily insurance for the district. Okay. Uh, and we don't have but a few named insureds under those policies. Okay, uh, so why, but why, why wouldn't I find some dollar amount in the culture and rec? rec because the people who are insured under this policy are the parking lot attendants who profit the village district by their efforts. Hmm. We, and they are employees of the village district. But all of the revenue they generate basically goes back to reduce the culture and recreation component of the budget. I think we're splitting hairs. 92% of this budget is cultural and recreation, 8% is general government. Well, I, this is what it was given to me. This is why I'm making my comments, that's all. Well, I'm just saying that. I'm surprised to see almost every one of these line items, nothing is shared down below here that I can find. And I thought proportionally something ought to be down there. It almost looks like everything is paid for here when you talk insurance or legal or maintenance and so on. Uh, you know, some supplies, you know, $7,200 for supplies, office supplies. What do you, I don't see that down here. I see, this, I see some supplies in the parking lot. But, so, I mean, that's my impression with this general government. I think that 
that needs a little pruning and a little refining. You all set, Paul? Yeah. Good. I would uh, observe that I heard that the parking, I heard that the insurance, the named insurers were actually related to the parking lot employees. They're, they're, they're insured under our policies because right. they are employees of the right. village district. We do not have many employees. Right. These bands are not employees. The people with the right. fireworks are not employees. The firework, uh, the fire shell we put on, they, they, none of those are employees in the village district. Mm -hmm. So the insurance is, I thought I heard you say the insurance was just basically covering parking lot employees, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, the general liability, it covers any of us who are named insurance under that policy should there be litigation. So it would include the commissioners yep. and, and so forth. So it covers us as well. Treasure. Commissioners, yeah. yeah. And it covers the playground. Playground. When someone falls and breaks their head. We all clear on that, right, Jerry? Yep. Okay. Right. <coughs> yeah, thank you. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I looked at this budget over the weekend, and it brings back a lot of memories. Um, for many people in the room that I've worked with night and day for many years, uh, Mr. Ladd is absolutely correct. Let me see if I can help my friend, Mr. Zanoy. Uh, think about as owning a, a business and your insurance, your legal, your accounting, your uh, office supplies come under the umbrella of, in this case, the Hampton Village District is a government entity. This is required, uh, starting with payroll and legal and everything else. What you're going to hear about in a few minutes, and, and one of the things that wasn't used, and I know Senator Stiles is aware of this, because she was very unbelievably greatly involved in a lot of these. A lot of these things below, if not most, are involved as offshoots of what the village district provides to the public in the form of events. And so a lot, everything on here that Chuck and Maureen and Bob and Stephen have put forth and uh, throughout involve insurance certificates, insurance policies with another organization, that being the state of New Hampshire. And so when, you, when, when they talk about all these events that come up, which is wonderful, by the way, every year this gets better and better, and I, I only have a few questions later on. But the separation, as Mr. LeBranch said, had to do with the law that took place for whatever reason to separate out. Um, the, the, the thing I want to caution, though, you know, in fairness, the increases for the 2019 proposed, they're dealing with what everybody's dealing with, whether it's legal or accountants or uh, insurance. I, I don't so much have a problem with that. And, and it's not surprising, and I think Chuck remembers, you could, through the years, there's always been a higher number in culture and recreation. And so that area, and I, I do want to, before we go on to second session, I, I want to commend John Kane because, you know, it's interesting when you promote an area, and the Hampton Beach area is a large area, and you promote it in such a way that not only um, you're getting your money's worth with John, but having been there all those years on the beach, and, you know, and, and for those that know me, know if they want to ask me, I can tell them, I saw all these guys all the time. It's not just a matter of Chuck gaveling a meeting at 5.30 at the, at the village at precinct hall and Bob and them getting together. It's the nighttime work, the weekends, uh, the meetings. Uh, John and I, uh, Rich Rainier was down there all the time, sand sculpture. It is such a great story, and Hampton Beach is what it is because these folks predominantly, and others, a great group of volunteers, have put a, a, a very concerted effort to bring us to that stage. And, and, I, and I have to say, too, it, it is proud to see Nancy here tonight because, you know, back when Nancy was a state rep, and of course now we're really going back, when her and I worked on the seawall together, it was a culmination of a lot of things that just made everything better. So in, agreeing that, yeah, nobody wants to see costs go up, but I think as we discuss Article 3, you're going to hear more about from the commissioners and others um, <clears throat> what happens. I do commend them for their, their insight into their foresight on purchasing the clues parking, uh, the clues hardware for parking lot. That, that's that's vision. I mean, we need that. We need more of that. So I hope that helped because it really is part and parcel of an entity that has to be done right at the outset, and those expenses have to be incurred. So that's all I had to say on that. Anybody else? Okay. It's not universally accepted that the purchase of the clues parking lot was a uh, great vision. Um, in any case, <laughs> it is from a revenue point of view. I think. It's your opinion. Not everyone shares the opinion. That's all I'm saying. The majority of voters. I don't care well, how many. I said not everybody. <laughs> okay. And 
that's a factual statement. Yeah, you're right. Stands on its own. Doesn't need comment. Um, so we have a number of $66,180 for the general government budget. Does anyone wish to move that number or propose a different number? I'll move the 66180 to public hearing. I'll second it. And seconded by Mr. Fluff. Oh, okay. I don't want any conflict, Steve. Oh, okay. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, any discussion on, any further discussion on the number? Great. Uh, let us do our thing. All those in favor of 66180, raise your hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Okay, everyone except Jerry uh, voted in favor. Okay, on to Article 3, uh, proposal for the so-called culture and recreation portion of the Hampton Beach Village District budget, $864,213. Uh, questions, comments, what have you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Please. I'd like to make an opening statement to sure. this. Sure. Oh, thank you. You'll note in this budget a substantial dollar increase over last year. This was driven by factors with, over which we had absolutely no control. Toward the end of last summer, the beach was struck with an issue concerning Legionnaire's disease. Yes. We have a lot of anecdotal evidence that that had a very significant impact negatively on the beach. Right. The seafood festival attendance was dramatically off shortly after that event. The news media carried that event in a very unfavorable way toward us in the town. The precinct and other players at the beach have spent years building up the beach's brand. We do not know at this time to what extent that brand has been negatively impaired, but this budget is an attempt to rebuild whatever harm that uh, occurrence caused to us, and you'll note in this budget the addition of additional activities and the expansion of other activities because of those reasons primarily. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to comment, question, Brian? Yeah, I, I have to say I, I'm so proud of this because I love, I, I'm a big PR guy and I, I think promoting anything that is going to be worthwhile. People love coming to Hampton Beach and you know I noticed they added the, the advertisement PR and, and internet. Uh, the 172, and it, I assume that's in John's area. But I, the other thing I want to, without going into all individual things, what I like, and, and Commissioner Ladd uh, has stated at his meetings, because I watch them all, but I love hearing about the circus and the, the, the country week, which my daughter's a, you have to remember, there's a lot of people that love that country week. They may not call you up, Maureen, but that's terrific, because it, it's going to work, believe me. And uh, movie night. Um, Maureen Buckley brought that to a whole nother level, and we tried it years ago. Actually, if I may, John, John Kane. Kane John Kane too. That, well, John, I remember John carrying equipment out there. Uh, John did, no, no, John did a lot yeah. more than that. Oh, I know he did. Yeah. Believe me, John. Yeah. I was with John many of those Monday nights. But um, <laughs> you know, in the uh, the fire shows, it's it's nice to see um, you know some additional. Some nice new things, you know what I mean? And and your 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 meetings that you have are very educational because I was telling Bob that for someone who watches replays most of the time because I can't be there for work uh, because of work, it's nice to see the enthusiasm and the additional things that are coming at all the time. And that's a credit, um, you know, the idol uh, competition. Uh, it, do you believe, Maureen? Do you believe uh, it's going to be the 15th year? 2005, we sat there. I know. We started it in the old seashell, which was, uh, which was great. I, I am going to have a question on the bus transportation, but I'll let others talk first because other than that, I, I have no uh, qualms with any of it. And I will say the great, uh, I mean, the breakdown of Steve. I assume you put this together because it's really well laid out. The income is well laid out, and it's it's worth it. Hey, uh, you know, we're talking millions of people come to our beach, so all right. that's all I have to say on that. I'll, I'll wait for my last comment or question on the buses. Anybody else on the uh, Article 3? Yeah, I got a comment. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah. I, I, too, think there's a lot of creativity as exhibited here uh, in this culture and recreation budget, although it's up 30% from the three-year average. Yeah. Uh, to your point, Bob, I guess. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, that, is it just Monday night that the movie is showing? Movie night. And what is it, a big screen on the beach? So, yep. we, so that I, I could go down with, if, if, if the chairman would want, I could go down with 
the seven or eight items that I that think you're going to question. Go and that might answer everybody's question. Fine. Any objection from the body? No. Go no, ahead. that might Three be things. Great. Uh, Chuck, do it. I can, I'll start at the top. So our advertising, we, we've added a lot more uh, with internet, um, more Facebook. Um, we're working with apps. We're doing a lot more in that level. We. Um, Last year, we came, sh we came up short. At the end of the year, when we really needed to push Hampton Beach because of the Legionnaires, we, we had overspent um, at the Country Week, which we didn't overspend, but the money that we might have used toward the end of the year, we, we really pushed that week. And I think, that we, I think if anybody went down there, they, they saw the amount of people that were there. Myself, being uh, in, in the hotel business, I have people calling now because of last year's Country Week, so I'm just one of many, many hotels and many <laughs> cottages and businesses down there. So we added uh, almost 22,000 to that budget just to help push more, more advertising in. We have added a different event, so we need to advertise those events. So that, that's where that money came in there. Next going down, uh, concert series. The bands want more money. It's the, everything is, is going up. and. Um, it's been pretty tight for the past three years. We've been right around the same amount of money. This year, the bands are looking for more money, and um, it's getting harder and harder. So that went up there. Ten percent. Yeah. Um, payroll. <laughs> this, we we really don't know. I, I I we we try to keep it at certain levels. If you see it was down in other years, uh, it's tough getting help. I mean, now, you know, back in the day, we were we were given. Eight dollars an hour, and people were happy with that. We're not going to get anybody to sit around and f work for eight dollars an hour. So that's gone up. That's where we're up. I'm 30%. hoping we have enough. So yeah. that that's where that is. Um, I'm going to drop down to um, movie night. Movie night. We've been getting away with with stuff. <laughs> you mean copyright uh, violations? So <laughs> the the. Um, the movie companies want their cut. So when we run a <laughs> Disney movie, we have to send them 300, 500, yeah. not, oh, yeah. 700, so depending mm -hmm. on what that movie is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that brought that up. We also need a new screen. So but we, we don't show anything. Hold on, Jerry. We, we let yeah. him do his presentation. No, so I mean, let him do it. Let him do it, Jerry. So, so that's it. that. Um, Country Week. Country Week was a hit. We want to make it a bigger hit. There, we had Michael Morgan, something Michael Morgan, William. John Michael, John Michael Morgan. I, I'm sorry, I don't know. And he, and he was a he was a premier group. People went crazy over. We want to have two or three premier groups that week. So uh, we're, we're we're cutting back a little during the day, but we're boosting mm -hmm. the the uh, entertainment at night to see what we can if we can pull something out of it. Seafood festival, which is not our event, uh, was a dud the first first year. Second year a little better and we all know what it's become. So uh, we're hoping Country Week will become something substantial. So that's why we're putting the extra money in that. And, and if I may, we also instituted it that week because according to the businesses, you can finish, you can speak to yeah, that. Yeah, so that week, area. so what happens is you have the big hype of 4th of July, everybody comes down, they want the 4th of July weekend or they might take the week but then all of a sudden if you notice the beach Right after the weekend of the 4th, the, the beach just takes a big dive for about four days. This is what we're pushing in there. We're hoping that there isn't any dive on those four days. So that's, that's where that, that is. Um, next we have the circus show, the circus night. I don't know if anybody saw the presentation. I um, saw that. The guy is called the Mooch, Michael Mooch, I believe. It sounds really good. Buddy. And uh, they just come in and they're doing a whole amazing show. Um, so we're going to give that a whirl. We're going to give that a whirl toward the end of the summer. Uh, what was the date on Labor Day weekend? I believe is it yeah, Labor So Day. Hampton yeah. Beach was always famous for their big Labor Day weekend celebration. They used to call it Carnival Week. Uh, Carnival Week was the thing for years, 50s, 60s, 70s. So now we're trying to bring back a a, a Labor Day event. So that that's where we're looking at that. Um, and then, I, I, no one mentioned the bus last year, which, which uh, uh, we talked a lot about. We had it at the meeting. We have nothing lined up for a bus. We have been talking. I've talked to Coast. I've talked to 
CNJ, I've talked to Peter Pan, we've talked to private people. We have been trying to get some type of transportation for the people to and from the beach, getting to Newburyport, getting to town to go shopping at Hannaford, getting not just for not just for the people that are that are coming to the beach as tourists, but for people working at the beach, for people living at the beach. If I don't have that money in the budget and someone comes along and says, we can do three days a week and we're looking for four thousand dollars, I have twenty five, I can give them four thousand. If someone wants to come in and do a full service thing, we we can subsidize and see how that goes. So last year it was not voted down. Uh, it was in the budget. We talked about it. We put it in, and we didn't use it. If you look, it wasn't used. Right. It was, yeah. and and it, there's a lot of things that aren't used. When you talk about legal, we're back going back to the other, it has to be there because we can't spend money we don't have. So um, some years, last few years, we've been doing a lot of work on the playground. Some years, um, I you should see the amount of stuff that I have in, at the back of the hotel and stuff coming in. Uh, that needs to be put in once once the ground isn't like cement. Uh, so um, we try not to spend it all. We try to we try to keep down as as, as best we can. But we want to spend money on advertising and bringing people there and the shows and the entertainment. If we, you know if you if you if we had the same entertainment, which we have a lot of the same entertainment, uh, we could cut back that. But then it, people are going to get bored with that. So we mix it up as much as we can. So on that, I, I think those are the main points. There might be other things. Um, and then you can ask us any, any questions on those. Bill, sir? Yeah. Okay. Jerry, you still have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Yes, the, the, uh, the $20,000 for the circus night, is that one day, Chuck, or yes. just one day? It's one day. It's a huge, it's a huge is amount. Is there like a of lot of people involved in that circus? I mean, uh, yeah. it's like a troop or what? Yes. Yes. It's acrobats. It's Where a little are they little coming everything. from? It's the Boston. It's the Boston Circus Guild. So if you look that up uh, online, you'll be able to see I would that. just interject. Hold on, they, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going Jerry? To, no, I mean, uh, I, I think Chuck has answered, answered my question. It was, it's, it's one day. I are you all set? Yes, on that line item. Okay, great. I have other line items. Could um, I just make Bob? one comment sure. on that line item? This group did this show at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Yeah. This is first rate stuff. If you want to get the quality, you have to pay for the quality. So uh, what are they going to have? Jerry, they going to have the, uh, well. Bob has the floor. Let, let him fit. Are you done, Bob? Yeah. If you want the floor, go ahead, Jerry. So does that mean, I mean, they're going to set up like trapezes, or what, how are they going to do the circus? Yeah. Would, I, I would recommend you come and see it, Jerry. It's going to be spectacular. We're going to have the trapeze I'll pick you up. We're going to have a 12 or 14-piece circus band come up a side street to the shell. This is well orchestrated, but we can't go too much further. We have to talk to the permitting. They got a lot of setting up to do for this, I would think. Well, actually, not as much as you would think. There's probably more complexity with the fire show, which is put on by the same group at a different time. Okay. Um, this circus thing, uh, you did a, uh, a video replay at one of your meetings about a year or two ago for that same thing, didn't you? No, that, that was, was the for fire the fire show. Fire show. The fire, fire show. show. So about three meetings ago, was it? Yeah, I think it was the December meeting. You December said? meeting, we had it. So uh, you could probably look back into the December meeting online and see. Um, yeah, I'm, I was just concerned about a year ago. You know, I, I, I copy your videos. And uh, when I put that video up on YouTube, I was harangued by lawyers for copyright violations <laughs> because I was displaying your meeting which contained copyrighted material oh. from that group. Hmm. So you may want to be aware of that. I ultimately fought it to a successful conclusion, and successful from my point of view. It's still up there. So. Uh, but I had to fight it. Uh, and just so you're aware that you know these people are very copyright sensitive, and so if you have them in there and, and people are, are, are there enjoying their show, and they start taking pictures or whatnot, and they may pull out a copyright uh, notice on them, so just, just be aware of That's that. It's good to know. We'll talk to them. Um, anything else on the yeah. Article 3? Jerry? Think, yeah. The fire show, is that a one-nighter? What is that? Yep. That is um, the weekend after Seafood Festival. Ah. And there was probably about four, 450 people watching it, which is a lot and, and, uh, at the end of the season on the beach. This is year three, is it not? Is this, this year three of the fire show? Year. It is increased every year as well. No. 
I was working. Uh, Maureen, on this movie night, I don't see anything spent in 16 or uh, 2016 or 17. Did we get started on movie night a few years ago? It was on. It was under other activities. Oh, other. Okay. Because it became so big, we, we put it out on so its own. Why don't right? we do more than just Monday no. nights? What? No, that's not right. The reason, Jerry, is that we have to pay a company oh. for every movie we show. Okay. And we only had to start doing that a couple of years ago. We didn't know. We had no, no, no idea. where it was before he's we, talking about. It. And the movie, before the movie it night. used to be under well, was, other activities. No, no. It's, it was, we didn't pay anything in 16 and 17 because we didn't know we were infringing. I would suggest we not go too far up that street. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's why. That's why. That's why, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, I could. Of course, this bus service jumps in twenty-five thousand. Just what do you perceive there, Chuck? Exactly what I said. I don't know, but I need to have it there in case something comes comes forward. But do you have a bus? No, I've been dealing with bus companies trying to come up with something. It might be it might be a thousand dollar item. It might be a twenty-five thousand dollar item. But if it's not in the budget, we cannot make a deal for it. And it's come to uh, most of the people that I've talked to or that have gone to our meetings feel we have a need for some type of public transportation. Years ago, we used to have a trolley. It's kind of sad it's not there. Before that, there used to be the beach van or the be what is it called? The beach, the beach van? Buggy. The beach buggy that used to do it. There was <coughs> stuff for people to actually use to get from one end of the beach to the other or to go to town. or I would love to see something coming from uh, Newburyport to, yeah. so, that, cause, so they can take the buses in and out of Boston. Be well, be that as it may, I guess. Um, no, sir. no, I'm okay. not. Okay, no. go ahead. Um, again, I, I, like, I like what you've done here. Uh, it's up 30%. Um, over the three-year average, but so be it for Bob's input, if you will, and yours as well. Um, oh, yes. If we overrun on one line item, can we, is it? Is it the bottom line. It's bottom line. Yeah. So if this bus thing doesn't work out, you can grab the 25000 if you're overrunning on, overrunning on something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, but well, we can't take money from from general government. No, I understand. Culture, culture no, to you, general government. What, what's that? We can't take from one budget to the other. Right, you can take it amongst general culture. That's right. Okay, so you can do that's good. So um, the other thing is this: you want, let's say that you have a surplus each year. What happens to it? We've uh, we put it back in. Goes Sir, back to the taxpayers. We put it back to the taxpayers. How, how do you do that? Every, you want me to answer that, Mr. Chair? Yeah. In, the, in September, the town, the town of Hampton, the school district, and the village district, and everybody else in the state, okay. we have to re do a revised revenue right. in September so that, and file it with the DRA so that the tax rate can be so set in yeah. October. Okay, gotcha. so that's how that money goes back gotcha. every year. The taxpayers' gotcha. money so goes back. Forty thousand dollars. Okay, I, just, last I didn't know if we had an undesignated fund somewhere. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> no, there, Jerry. Yes, we do. We have we have money that we have to. Obviously, we have to. We have bills every month. So yeah, there's a checking account with money in it. But at the end of the year, the tax whatever we haven't spent, it goes back I, to I, the taxpayers. Okay. That um, I can guarantee you. Oh, I had another thought, but I can't. Uh, I can't think of it at the moment. So I'll have to relinquish the floor. All right, Brian. <coughs> I just had a, a question. I, I don't know if this is of the commissioners or the dollar line item for the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, I question that because we're aren't you mixing a municipal agency budgeting for a state agency? We had, we had taken a vote at one point to uh, contribute to um, to to contribute equally to get uh, minutes. So that's why th this was in the first year. So that was before they had any money in, the, in that. So you're just so leaving that dollar we just there. Leave that dollar there. So just so, so the minute. I think I remember that. Let me. Let me just make an observation from my experiences and being in that area stuff. And I just want to ask you folks on the bus tram station again. 
you referenced we used to have a trolley, and I, we all know the gentleman used to own it, and one of the reasons he gave to me was the insurance was too high. And so my question is, and, and I'm, I'm just understand I'm not out at midnight, but what happens if this bus is down the beach and pulls up in front of a restaurant, and you, let's say your, your goal is to pick up the employees, but all of a sudden you've got 30 people want to get on that bus and get off the beach. I, I'm just trying to help you out with some advice. I, I don't see... I don't see a plan for this twenty-five thousand, and, and I, you, you mentioned that it, it, you haven't found the bus yet. And so my my question no. is, I, I think that's you. So my question is, why wouldn't you want to wait until we ha till you have a plan? I think it's a great idea. Anytime you can get transportation from, uh, and we talked about the employees. I mean, I used to get parking for my state employees who were down there, worked with the town and you guys. I, I'm I'm just I'm still wondering what what this is looking like because I, I just envision it could be more of an issue for you guys than you might think. And what is 25,000 actually gonna buy you? That's so, like I said before, there's a lot of bus agencies that are out there. C&J, Peter Pan, Coast, that Coast should be in Hampton Beach. They're, 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 they're a Seacoast bus system that's right. funded by the, 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 uh, the state, I believe, all right? Now, a lot of the towns subsidize them so that they will come into their town. Mm -hmm. Hampton has never done that. So now Hampton does not have any bus service. Hampton Town. Right. So this gives us an opportunity, if we can work something out with them, that we could maybe get some type of bus service. Now, the gentleman that had the trolley took over the trolley from the Chamber of Commerce. Right. It was a lot of work for them. Um, but back then, they were looking at the trolley as a money-making operation. and. I don't, and, and as, a, as a private owner, of course he wants to make money. You don't run a business without making money on it. What we're doing is we're enhancing Hampton Beach. It doesn't necessarily have to make money. If it broke even, we'd be very happy. Um, so by subsidizing a bus service, we're enhancing the businesses. We're enhancing as much as we can and making it a better place. Yeah, and, so I, I don't blame the the trolley guy for closing because he wasn't making any money. No, but uh, and I understand that, but I, I'm just trying to help you out as far as, you know, when I had people driving state vehicles, they were under mandatory training, mandatory training prior that they got hired. Certain ages had to drive. I have to believe in this day and age, it, it the idea could be the greatest thing around. But you've got to have established trainings. I can't believe a, a bus that you would rent or whatever for three months. I got to believe the insurance premiums would be off the charts. It's all I'm saying. You know, to throw a number twenty-five thousand. I think the idea is unique, and there's no question there'd be a possibly a place somewhere in, into doing that. I'm just not sure when I look at that if there's not something. Here we are in, in March almost, and there's not something quote in place. Are you going to? folks get yourself in the situation. Let's say, let's use the other aspect. Let's say it works out and it, it's bigger than you thought. And then the cost gets something at, something you weren't thinking of. And then you have to deal with more administration, more payroll costs, more hours. What are the hours? Well, if, if it was as easy as us going to lease a bus and running the bus, yep. we would have already done that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we're, I think we're smart enough to know that we're not in the bus business. There is people in the bus business that we might be able to partner with. Yeah. That's, I, that's the only reason we have it there. Just, just my thoughts, but thank you. This is just annoying. You know, I, a thought that I had running on top of what Brian just said is school buses in Idaho all summer. And you could set up schedules where you could be in Newburyport three days a week or Portsmouth two days a week or whatever. Just post your schedules and try out a pilot run of, of sending these buses to these various areas and having them report back to the casino area or the main part of the beach uh, and see how it goes. And if, in fact, uh, you're not getting any uh, customers, then, uh, then the idea drops away. Right. Or if you are, then, like Brian said, it may, it may mo begin to multiply. And but again, we don't want to be... We don't want to be the bus driver, the bus token collector, and the mechanic. No, you would have a you would have a contract set up. With, so that with, that's uh, the so it would have to be the right right person. You also, George. Yeah, one more comment. This this uh, this part of the budget, the culture and rec, that's primarily paid for by the businesses and the people that claim non-exempt in terms of the residents. 
and they buy into everything that's happening that's down there too. in terms of entertainment and so on. Right. Is that right? Yes, and there is a lot of people that don't go for the exemption because they want to contribute. The only one hold last... On, hold okay. on, Brian. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to mention that... Um, Jerry, you asked, you said something about a bus going to Newburyport. Yeah. The truth is, there is a bus. It's called the Massachusetts uh, MTA, Massachusetts Transportation. Merrimack Valley. Merrimack, Merrimack Valley, 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 something. It goes right. from Lawrence to Salisbury. Right, but it stops, in, it stops in Newburyport. It goes all the way from Lawrence, Haverhill. Yeah. It makes stops along the way, but one of them is in Newburyport, and then uh, Salisbury. Salisbury. Every day. And, the, and it, it drops a whole bunch of people off because I've, I see the bus. They pick them all up at around 3.30, 4 o'clock. The bus arrives, and a whole bunch of people get in it, and they go back to wherever, Lawrence and Haverhill and Newburyport. So there is something. Or maybe we just something. need an interim way to get them from Seabrook up to our place. Well, we're so lucky that Massachusetts has all kinds of money <laughs> and that they, they subsidize all these you know, things that allow the people in, you know, to come to our beach. We're very lucky. We're very lucky. Did I hear that those buses are not going to Hampton? Yeah, they come to Hampton. Massachusetts buses do. Massachusetts, yeah. they stop oh, right in front of where the seat. Just wanted to get clear on that. And, and it is a, it is a bone of contention for a lot of them in Mass that they come right. into New Hampshire, as well as they go to Salem, New Hampshire, as well. Mm -hmm. So they're getting federal money, and that 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 area that they're covering is they're allowed to cover us. So they all stop at Seabrook. They do come to Hampton. Yes, that one come comes to Hampton, but Hampton it's not Beach. a bus. It's not a bus that. That would work for the beach. The beach. It's, it works for people coming from Lawrence and Haverhill, and but at some point maybe we can work something with them. So that's something to think about. Just a point of clarity: it does not stop in Seabrook. It stops in Salisbury. Oh, Salisbury. And ah. comes to Hampton from Thank Salisbury. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Brian. I just had one. Maybe this will close it out. But and I think everyone in this audience would agree with this. You know, you mentioned like. We don't want to be this to whatever, or you don't want to change the oil or something you just mentioned, which I understand. But remember, you have seven state agencies on Hampton Beach. And when I was running state parks at Hampton Beach, it didn't matter whether I was state parks. We had questions that had to do with the town, John knows that, with the marina, with the harbors, with DOT. Be careful what you're asking for, because you've got to think of your partners that work with you, including the town of Hampton, that are going to be bombarded. If they see a bus with questions, who do I call? This, you know, what time? I think there's a bigger discussion. It's just my recommendation that needs to be had on something that the minute people see a bus, are they going to get picked up? They're going to stop John. They're going to stop Rich Renee. It doesn't matter what agency it is. Think about that part of it because that's what happens in the seacoast and throughout the state now in tourism. The people want an answer. They don't necessarily understand the vehicle, how to get there. So that's, I just wanted to put that out there. Anybody else? I heard that you wanted to spend more money in branding last year, but you ran out. I, was, I think you said that blog event, right? No, I said we wanted to spend more money this year on branding because of what happened yeah. last year. Okay, so you did not have insufficient funds last year. Well, Chuck said it was Well, we spent, we spent <laughs> the majority of our funds in, in the right like categories. There was money left over that we little, put back in. Bit, yeah. yeah, 40 grand, 40 which grand. far exceeds the 25 you've got slotted for this bus, or bus service. Well, 25 of the 40 was the bus. Yeah, so 25, <laughs> 25 <laughs> of the 40. Right. right, so that surplus could be reduced if you didn't have the bus in there, and you'd still have a surplus of 15, right? Yeah. Right. So the inclusion of, of the $25,000 line item seems uh, superfluous, on, superfluous on that basis. Your argument was that you need to have the money in order to spend it, and given the existence of that surplus, you would have the money. Well, we don't, we don't always know we're going to have the surplus. And in any case, you'd be doing a contract, I assume, for you know a year in advance or something like that anyway. Uh, so you know that's, that's how I'm hearing this discussion on that topic. Uh, furthermore, I see that Jerry and Brian and others have raised a number of issues relative to bus service. I think there are a number of other issues that haven't been discussed, which I won't want to go into. But I think that's a very problematic area for you. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, because I'm a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> right, Maureen? Absolutely. There you go. So, uh, Peach. <laughs> Peach. Yeah. No Georgia Peach. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. I'm absent hugs and kisses because it's now considered oh, sexist. No, that's no, right. don't go there. Good God. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Please. So, Jim. Yes, Mr. Steven. You said 40,000. I think we should clarify and be sure that we get the uh, numbers right. Culture and Recreation was budgeted 762,207. They spent 732,000. 651. It's less than $30,000 right. that was left over, not 40. Okay. I heard 40 from somebody. No, 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 well, no, 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 no I see it. Let's, let's go to the numbers, yeah. okay? Yep. The numbers well, are. Thank you for the correction. It's less almost $30,000. Right. Less than okay. 30. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank All right. You. The, the statement I made still holds water. Um, thank you for the correction, Stephen. So we have a number. What was the difference between the two budgets? The two. The two I understand. Budgets, right? I understand. Um, so we have a number. Brought forth by the Hampton Beach Village District of eight hundred sixty-four thousand two hundred thirteen dollars. Does anyone wish to use to move that number or move a different number? I'll make a motion to move the number. I'll second. And okay, so there we go. Any questions, comments on the motion? And seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate. Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in and helping yes. us with the budget. We have to have the public hearing. So. Yes, I know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, now, the, um, uh, do they have to be here for the public hearing? Or no? I don't think anyone Unless except no the members have to be room. here. But in any case, we will now so. proceed with the public hearing on Article 2, which one, is a budget so for uh, $66,180. Oh. And the public hearing is now open at 8.06 yes. p.m. Anybody wishing to speak uh, from the public? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing at 8.06 p.m. and now open the public hearing for Article 3 for a total of $864,213. Does anyone wish to speak from the public on Article 3? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing at 8.06 p.m. Uh, we're all set on, on your budget. Thank you very much for coming in and helping us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. LaBranche. I, I have an MS um, 737 form here that needs to be signed by a majority of this budget committee, Mr. Chair. I've already signed it. I'd can like I, to sign it. Can I send it along its way and yeah. so people can? There are two of them. Sure. Okay. There are two of them there. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. Great work, Paul. guys. Nancy, are you not going to stay and watch the rest of the meeting? <laughs> 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 Closing comments, oh, year in review, oh, and yeah. other exciting thank stuff you. like that. <laughs> yes. Rich, thank you. It was good seeing you anyway, Nancy. Thank you, thank thank you folks. Okay, so. <coughs> yeah, I'm tempted to use it for the first time, actually. <laughs> Okay, can we go back to the, our wonderfully structured meeting, please? There you go, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thanks, John. Closing comments, year in review. Anyone wish to make such a closing comment or review it in the year? Well, go ahead, Steve. Mr. LaBranch. I noticed, well, closing comments. Um, year in maybe review. This Okay, maybe it should be under new business or other business or something. I noticed Jerry sent out some changes for... Yeah, new business. We'll deal with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else under closing comments? Year in review. Mr. Walbert. Yeah, I, I, I'm i proud to make these comments. And it was funny, I'm sitting at home this weekend again and in between doing a lot of things. And I, I want the committee to know how much I've thoroughly enjoyed um, coming back into public service in Hampton, and especially being on this committee. Uh, Chairman Jones, to you, um, I think you've done a spectacular job this year. I, um, I learned a lot. You know, even someone like me who's been on prior boards and like Regina works a thousand different hours and Jerry trying to do everything in the town and going to meetings and meetings and Mr. LeBranch, one of my commissioners I worked with 25 years ago and Mr. Ladd and Mr. Pluff and his schedule and other people on our committee. <laughs> but I think the thing I was, one of the things I was most impressed with was your organization of our meetings, <coughs> your layout of the agendas, your addition of, which I hope continues in next year's board, 
uh, the information request. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was so effective because it, it, set a, a, it set a place and an agenda for a falling meeting of what was to happen. I also appreciate very much your HamptonBud.com. I thought the, the links you had on there, the snippets from the meetings, um, advising us we can go look at certain things. I mean, we can watch the replays on the town website as well. But I, I think the, the thing that culminated in starting in last March of 2018 and, and through now was the evolution of things are changing in a good way, meaning more questions were asked, which I think is wonderful, of all the boards in town, whether it was the, towns, uh, the town budget, whether it was our uh, SAU 90 budget, whether it was the budget presented by the Village District uh, Commissioners tonight, talking about tax rates, talking about Warren articles and, and drilling down in our budgets, drilling down the budgets as well, looking at uh, what it means to, to bring out data issues so that the public is very educated on what they're voting on. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. And you know, there will be people to say, well, we had disagreements and this and that. Well, to me, that's not, that's not a bad thing. You know, the Budget Committee, as Mr. LeBranch knows, has been former chairman, by nature is an adversarial because we are preparing a budget for the voters. We have to make decisions that maybe people will say, well, why, why are they questioning department heads or why are they questioning this? Um, I, I, I just thought it was terrific. I think we end the year setting, sending everything to the voters. And I think Mr. Ladd made the comment it's throughout the year. He's absolutely right. You know, at the, at the end of the day, on March 12th, the voters will decide. I'm very excited to be coming back, uh, you know, or still on the committee. Of course, I've got a couple more years to go. And I, I think you set a great tone this year and very organized. Your attendance was exemplary. Your keeping in touch with us was exemplary. I think um, asking the questions, and, and certainly the gentleman to my right, which I wish had run again, and yourself, um, coming back on to help us out with his due diligence. and. Um, all of you I've worked with, you all have an unbelievable work ethic. And I, I think that's what I'm most proud of because you put the effort in and that, at the end of the day. Uh, I can't help but think, and I've got to compliment Mr. LeBranch, you know, it was September of 1996 in this room, the first meeting, and Mike and I were selectmen back then, September of 1996 when we put the very first televised meeting and Mr. LeBranch was a commissioner. He sat out there and Vic Lassard was here that night and we, we swore in Justin Cutting as a firefighter and we promoted Matt Clark to lieutenant. Look at where we come, we're, look at where we become. We become the information highway. And that's why those of us really want to make sure that the information is always available. Thanking so much the cable folks, Bill Lowney and Brian McCain and company, and, and all of the meetings that are televised. And the school district, because Channel 13 does their good work as well. So you're able to watch all kinds of things. Um, I was excited this year, and I, I really appreciate um, your professionalism and your keeping us in line. You know, you did a great job running the meeting. One of the big, not keep, some, somebody like me keeping in line must be tough at times. But you it was went, a pleasure, Brian. You went around <laughs> and you said to people, okay, Mr. LeBranch has the, the, the floor, or Mr. Pluff. And I, I respected that. And I, I think you deserve a lot of credit, and you will be missed. I, I hope you decide to, to come back again. You've put a, a gallant effort in six years, and I think it's to be commended. And I want to thank you. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Thank Mr. You. Chair. Mr. LeBranch. Everything that Brian said and a little bit more. Jerry, I want to thank you for coming back and helping us out. Yes. Okay. Well, that, you're welcome. You did a, a, that was an excellent service. You obviously were able to f get right in and hit the ground running. Thank you very much. You Mr. Thanked. Chair, you did a good job. Thank you. I wish to thank all of the committee members, every one of us. You know, the thing that, um, that makes this town of Hampton so absolutely wonderful and such a jewel is that not only the, the, uh, the, uh, the village district, but also the budget committee, but all the committees in this town, all of the folks that make this town, thank you, Brian, make this town as wonderful as it is. And, you know, our, we, everybody shows up at these meetings. It's amazing. I know we get a little bit smaller group nowadays, and I think it works great. I think it works better than when we had 14 or 15 people. This works out much better. But, you know, it impresses me so much that 
when we get into the cycle, and we're meeting sometimes twice a week, mm -hmm. and everybody shows up. Everybody on this committee shows up to do their work. And yeah, we ask a lot of questions. And you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So yeah, you know, you're not always gonna, everybody's not gonna agree on everything. But at the end of the day, we have finished our cycle, and now it goes to the voters, whether it's at the village district, the schools. Uh, the, we did our job, and I congratulations to every one of us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Branch. Anybody else with a comment? Jerry? I have, yeah, I, I, I'll be brief here. I think the last two years uh, uh, between Steve and yourself have done a lot to organize the budget committee and keep it in control. It was really, the previous years, it was, uh, I would say, uh, out of control, relatively speaking. Everybody talking over everybody and uh, people cutting in and out of conversations and going around the table of 12 people or 13 people and trying to get everybody's input. Then having to go back because they wanted to comment on what somebody else just said, blah, blah, blah. That didn't work. It's working now organizationally. But what I think we still need to do has become more analytical. The budget is coming in here with little review. The town manager doesn't touch it very much. In terms of any kind of reductions, you're talking maybe 0.01%, something like that. And the BOS doesn't do very much. Those are softball questions they throw up there, and they thank them very much for doing a great job, and the budget comes floating in here. Okay, This, this is the committee that has to do the analytics. And come with, a, with those analytics, and the study of the last two or three years worth of spending and the year-to-date spending should come, should come assertiveness and recommendations. And there'll be some confrontation. Without it, you don't have strength. Mm -hmm. Confrontation gives you strength of direction and respect. And sometimes that's what it is, confrontation. You get somebody to take exception to you and you get into a heated argument over it, and then everybody on the you know, committee kind of freezes up. Can't do that. You don't belong on the committee unless you're ready to go to bat and take your swings. So you've got to become analytical. I think there's a way to go there. You have, you've got a way to go there yet. But you're organized and you're in control, so you have the mechanisms in place. But on, there's nothing that you can, you know, that's better than good metrics. You look at the last two, three, four years worth of spending, you look at year-to-date worth of spending, and you ask your questions. <coughs> and if you don't get the right answers, you make a recommendation of a reduction of a certain amount of money. That's how budgets are done. That's not how they've been done. So there's the challenge. Other than that, two years' worth of organization and control and development have really been exciting and uh, effective. Steve, you let it off last year and did a wonderful job. Thanks. Jim. And Steve continued, I mean, Timmy continued, um, but now we need some hardball. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's all I have to say. Anybody else? Bob? I, I just want to wish you the very best going forward and whatever you choose to do with the rest of your life. <laughs> now that you're disconnected from the from my afterlife? Yeah. <laughs> it's afterlife. Well, we're not wishing that. <laughs> but no, the very best. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Yeah. Anybody else? No? All set. Okay. I, I've been here six years and now you're all, everyone on camera knows that I'm gone after this meeting from this, this committee. Um, I came in here six years ago, uh, <clears throat> so ignorant that I did not know how ignorant I was. And now, after six years, I can say with confidence that I'm less ignorant. And I'm more knowledgeable in areas that I don't know anything about, and, I, and I'll need to fill those in if I need to step into those areas. So I appreciate an education, as I've mentioned numerous times over the years. Learning new stuff is something that I really enjoy doing. And, I've learned a lot of new stuff. Well, it was new to me anyway. And, um, and so I, I very much value that six years. Well, it has been six years. And most of, the, most of those years I've been working near full time <clears throat> in my uh, duties, uh, trying to understand exactly what is what. And maybe even developing some tools to try to help out the committee and doing some other things. <clears throat> Spent a lot of time on it and learned a lot as a consequence. I do suggest, Jerry, that uh, your comment about uh, improvement, I think the improvement's been going on every year for at least five years. Now, it has been, <coughs> it's been incremental, um, but it's been there. Right? Um, prior to, you know, I don't know, seven years ago or so, it was like really 
kind of sad. And uh, we've moved kind of sort of out of that sad state into a state where we're actually beginning to function as a committee, as a committee ought to, in my opinion. But we have a, the committee has a lot further to go. I think more organization build on the successes that we achieved over the last few years. We've got to continue to do the, what I would refer to as continuous improvement, always striving to do something better, not just accept that's the way we've done it and that's just the way we're going to do it going forward. There's always a way to do something better. We just got to put a little energy into thinking about it. So I would encourage the committee to continue not to sit on the laurels of the past few years, but let's strive for even better. Uh, what we did this year, what we did last year, is not perfect. There's lots of room for improvement. We need more tools on this committee. Uh, Jerry, you talked about uh, doing the analytics. Well, that's great, but we need, we need the resources to do that. That means time. Every member needs to have the time to do it. And we also need tools in which to facilitate the time that we're spending doing those analytics. And I think what's been lacking uh, in this committee is we have virtually no resources when you come right down to it. Over the years, I've heard arguments that, well, we have, we have legal uh, availability from the selectman's attorney, but it turns out that's not really true, it's just as I've been arguing for years, because he's not going to tell us the unvarnished truth. He's going to tell us the, the truth as the selectman would have him say, because they are his boss. That's just the nature of the way things work. This past year, we had four questions of legal opinion. We got refusal to answer the questions, which manifests the reality that we have no legal resource whatsoever. We can go, yeah, we can go to the selectmen's um, <clears throat> lobbying group, known as the New Hampshire Municipal Association, and get a legal opinion from them after we go through the protocol. But again, they are not exactly an independent source of, of uh, legal wisdom, are they? Because they have their own agenda that they're following. Um, <clears throat> and we tried to hire, when Mary Louise was chairman a few years ago, she tried to hire an attorney, and that caused a whole ruckus. So getting, getting, a, a, uh, getting resources in working on this committee has been problematic. Having uh, you know, uh, a website, thehamptonbud.com, was my example of saying, here's a prototype, Let's just, I'll just develop that as the, as the year went on. All that stuff was going on this year was, was developed and was occurring as I discovered the need as the committee was being administered this year. So in addition to doing the work of the, uh, the chairman, I was also doing a lot of software development, trying to catch up with our need. But HamptonBud.com is, is, is far inadequate in the sense that there is so many things that we need to, uh, that the budget committee needs to uh, facilitate its work. Um, and and HamptonBud.com is just the tip of the iceberg. You really need, the future committees really need to look at um, refining their resources, particularly their tools, uh, in terms of doing the work. So I would just close by saying I'm very happy to have served the six years because I've learned stuff that I didn't know before and was unlikely to learn anywhere else. Uh, and so I really enjoyed uh, learning the experience and some of the struggles we've had. It's been very enlightening. And I appreciate everyone tolerating my idiosyncrasies during the course of those years. I have uh, a question for you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> sure. In your six years, have you seen any improvements in your resources at all? Um, well, in my resources, yes. Because As I, a budget committee chairman, or member. Well, yeah, I mean, the existence of Hampton, the incorporation of the website in the administration of the committee, I think, is a significant improvement that, that has been done. But again, those are resources that were done. You created those resources. Yeah, exactly. It was done gratis. I mean, to, 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 to do that work, it would have cost, you know, money. There was no way we were going to get the time to pay for it. Because my problem with the budget flow, or however you want to describe it, not just at this level, but at the Board of Selectmen level, is first of all, when we get the budget, it seems like it's rushed. Mm -hmm. Even though they start working on it in the summertime, by we get it, it's like, I don't know, September, October. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we're like, oh, the Budget Committee wants it by Halloween, you know, around that time frame, <coughs> sometime the end of October, beginning of November. So when I look at it, we're looking at maybe 930 numbers. And okay, it's reasonable, but you know, in my head I'm thinking, well, we still have three months to go. Mm -hmm. So I would almost prefer 
Um, and I don't know what's going to happen after we reorganize. I don't know what's going to happen after the election, actually. But um, when we reorganize as a board, and if I'm chosen to be the budget committee mem uh, representative again, I would almost prefer that we held off on everything a little longer at the selectman level and at this level. Because it's like we'll look, when we first start looking at the budget, it's like not even applicable by the time we start reviewing the sections because a month's gone by. And then it's like October 31st. So now you have another month. And then when we get closer to being done with the budget, we get the 1130 numbers. And when the gap at 1130 is similar or bigger than the gap at 930, that I didn't see when I was a selectman looking at the 930 numbers, it's like, okay, well, I'm on the budget committee, so let's see what they're going to do when they look at it. So I know that we've always been like, oh, we got to get everything to the budget committee, and then we had the Warren articles, and maybe if we can tell the public that if you want to petition a Warren article, and you think that you're going to want to petition a Warren article, if you don't see it in the first round of Board of Selectmen Warren articles, maybe you should just petition it then, instead of waiting till like the last week or whatever. So then maybe push that whole Warren article, rushing those to the committee, because we might not get the budget till later. Review the budget, and then hopefully when we get the Warren articles, the majority of them will actually all be there. Maybe one or two petition ones will trickle in. And I think we can also encourage the public that if they have money Warren articles, I mean, give us a little notice so that we can do a thorough review at the board level and at the budget committee level. Because it's literally like, well, the Board of Selectmen has got to do this so that we can get it to the Budget Committee. Well, that, that's not how I work. So I think that maybe if we could, you know, I've talked to Mary Louise a little bit about it because I know she has a long history working on the Budget Committee. But it seems at the Board of Selectmen level, I agree with you, it's rushed. That was Brian. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Jerry. whoever said it. Jerry, Jerry said it. Jerry. Someone said it over there. Yeah. It's rushed. But there's nothing I can do if I'm only looking at 930 numbers at the same time, too, and I still have a whole quarter to go. Well, let me, let me comment on that, if I can. Sure. Um, the problems that, that you're expressing on, on the Board of Selectmen relative to the budget are actually exacerbated at the Budget Committee because we get it even later. Yeah. And we're dealing with the same old numbers, only now they're more old. So the problem, to, to delay it getting to the Budget Committee is only going to exacerbate the problem the budget committee has in dealing with with those old numbers. Well, I think the um, whole so I'm concerned about that. The whole the whole issue is is uh, structurally uh, flawed, and that's the problem. Is that people are voting in March for a budget in which uh, twenty percent of it has already been spent. So structurally, right away, we're starting off flawed, very d deeply flawed. And so whatever you can do fixes to improve things, maybe, but it's still going to be flawed in that respect. As well as possibly others. Now, as you as you pointed out, the uh, uh, department has put their budgets together in June. So why isn't the board of selectmen reviewing their budget proposals in July or August instead of October? That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. It well, could be I, yeah, brought I mean, to the budget committee earlier with the same numbers, except for the 930 number, arguably. But we could probably have that made. Well, it's probably available. just typical. We've always gotten it to the budget committee in October. Yeah, so it's we'll always done that way. That argument. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ongoing yeah, yeah. and ongoing, ongoing. But then that's why I don't like that general argument. It's always done that way because it means it basically uh, puts the squash on any new ideas for improvement. I, I don't like this. We've always done it way as a justification because it just kills the idea of doing any kind of uh, improvement. And so uh, I think there is room for improvement. Uh, but I think, as I said earlier, if the department heads are done with their budget in June, then why isn't, uh, certainly town manager should have a few weeks to review it before the selectmen. So by August, maybe, the, the uh, selectmen should be tap tackling the budget uh, so that the budget committee can get it maybe a month earlier than it presently does. So uh, anyway, those are my thoughts on what you had said. Jerry, you Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to also comment on the subject. He, he, here's my recommendation and my thoughts on it. I think Chris, Christy Pullman can help out here. If she can give us like three years of what has actually been spent and then the three-year average of that, okay? And then you have, let's say, four, let's say 15, 16, and 17, and you have 
18 in your hands in September. And you know that you got eight months of spending or nine months of spending, whatever the, whenever you get the budget. So you have a three-year average spend rate for the line item. You got 15, 16, and 17, and 18 year to date, let's say. So you look at that 18 year to date, and you look at the three-year moving average, and you say to yourself, gee, here's what I got through August. Can I, is, this, is this this line item annual? Can I annualize this budget? Can I annualize this line item? Most of the line items you can annualize. Some of them you can analyze, annualize. And what I mean by that is we've got eight months of spending, you have eight, you, it's, you know, you've got eight twelfths. Right. And then you just, you just, and you just take the, uh, the spending through, through eight months and then multiply that by 12. Yeah, I know how to do that. Okay. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying, uh, yeah. So, so if you have a fast, would you like an illustration? I love that. So if you have the three-year average. But you need those three years so that you can comparatively yeah, look at. Yeah, and the average of those three. Not just one year, yeah. Yeah, you need three years and then the average of those three years and then year to date, and can you annualize it or not? Some of the line items you can't. I learned that you you know, know, right. as well as I was going along. And But then you, you've got a good foot. You've got the data. Now you can ask questions that are meaningful. I don't hear that going on at the BOS level. And I don't really hear it going on here either in the budget committee. Be quite honest with you, and it, it gets confrontive. But you got, hey, nothing comes without a little bit of pain. You got to be assertive. You got to bring up the facts. You got to push on them, and you got to get a good answer back, or you're not comfortable. All set, Jerry. Yeah, Mr. Weber. Yeah, I just wanted to my good friend here. I, I think we did ask a lot of questions this year. I mean, it was a lot of drill down, but. Regina brings up an ex excellent point, and let me remind everyone that <clears throat> prior to SB2 in 1997, Mike and I would be sitting Thanksgiving week, selectmen Thanksgiving week, looking at the budgets. It was that far later because you had, you actually had a, right, Stephen, the old town meeting form of government. We all got there. It was some merit to that. SB2's had merit. The problem is, and, and to Regina's defense, I, I see where the issue rise too, and there's no question that has a lot, it's like, you know, here it is, all of a sudden it's Labor Day and we've all had a great summer and stuff. Um, I think it's, it deserves a lot of discussion and, and to Jerry's point of three years, I like that idea. But I, I, I would be remiss though, and, and I hope you do come back on uh, Selectman Barnes to the Budget Committee. I, you should be very proud because you worked hard for three years and the first three years, probably the toughest, <laughs> I can attest to some of that. I hope. But, but, <laughs> but think about this, think about this, in this town, <laughs> In this town, day and age, in 2019, in a very big town city we have to run a post, um, a lot of people have faith in you. So you should be proud of that. And, and you know, you. the work that you exemplified. You've been the information deliverer too, which I think has been terrific across the spectrums. That's going to continue to help us, I think, as we move on. Um, yeah, it's, it's not easy because we get that information and it's, it's, I don't know if it's any one area that's at fault, but it's, it is tough, isn't it? Because we get revision number three, and Regina's good enough to go back to get the information. We come back and we get revision, and you'd hand it to us, and we get through 1030 or 1031 or 1130. I, I think that brings up the whole thing we've been talking about. We all talk together more. We bring up more questions. I think, I will say, thing. I think the message this year was really sent for all across the boards that, you know, maybe they'll come with more information ahead of time. What we, you know, what are the questions we're gonna ask anyway, but the kind of the concept that we're under, and as you said, the last couple of years with a slower, uh, a smaller committee, which I think has been the greatest thing ever. I really do believe that having nine members has been phenomenal. So I, I welcome the discussion. Like I said, Tim, uh, you, you're not going too far. You'll still be around, and Jerry too, but I, I appreciate- uh, I'll be on the bench. <laughs> That's okay. But I appreciate all the discussion and we'll continue it certainly uh, after the election. Okay, Jerry? Yeah, I hear that, Brian. I appreciate what you're saying. But bottom line, bottom line, how much did we affect the budget that was given to us? Not very much. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Bob? No, I think okay. a lot of this conversation would be more appropriate at the next meeting when the, the new committee. I think it's appropriate to have this conversation for the year uh, going forward, certainly, but I think in, in, in a year in review is also appropriate, but I think it's appropriate now as well. I'm not saying it's not appropriate now. Okay. I'm saying it should be 
carried over mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. beginning. Absolutely. To right. spring training for the next bunch of years. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing now, so it's spring training. Right? Yeah. Winter <laughs> training, I guess. <laughs> Anybody else uh, want to comment? Uh, you're all set? Okay. Um, I think we're all set on closing comments slash yep. review, right? Okay. Yep. Uh, new business. I just wanted to highlight uh, on the schedule. I have scheduled uh, the next couple of meetings uh, on on Hamptonbud.com just so you guys have something out there. But you, the next committee has to make all those decisions. Yeah. Yep. So uh, just so you know. So that's, we're voting on March the 12th, right? That's correct. Yeah. So we don't have any. There's more budget. There's no more budget. That's correct. That's why this you're, is my. You're done that's why this is my last meeting. Where do I get my check? It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the mail. I, I, I just I just wrote it out. We're going to uh, have to go through it thoroughly. <laughs> 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 I'll compare the last three years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yes. changed by zero plus zero plus zero divided by three. Yeah, nothing from nothing leaves nothing there. Yeah, yeah. So March 19th. I think it was a song by that name, wasn't it? <laughs> right? Pardon? March 19th will be the next meeting. Uh, yeah. Well, this is yes, that is. That's correct. That's the way we've always done it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and or other, I want to highlight something. You know, Jerry made some suggestions about uh, minutes uh, adjustments, and you know, Jerry was not here when we had an ex you know rather exhaustive discussion yeah. about how we're going to deal with minutes. Yeah. So I just want to let Jerry know um, what we decided, Jerry, yeah. is that we wanted Barbara, the secretary, is doing a good job. Uh, basically, to keep the minimum legally required in the minutes and no more, no, nothing more than that. That's what we asked for. We also decided that we weren't be, would not be voting on the minutes as we had previously because it was just a series of wasted motions and discussions and so forth. And so, uh, the law does not require us to approve them, the minutes. And so, we as a committee decided not to bother wasting our time with that administrivia, okay? Because we also have the videos to give you for any well, details, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 with that knowledge that perhaps you did not have, Jerry, about our previous decision yeah. as a committee, I think that you probably would agree that um, uh, your your uh, suggestions for amendments would have been more appropriate in previous years, but not in this new environment. So, uh, I assume we can just move on from 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 there. Is I that okay? Like, I like what I said. I like it too. It was I wonderful. I like the edits. Yep. I stand by them, um, and you can treat them as you may. Well, it, it's entirely up to you. According to our rules this year, you can make a motion to amend. Anyone can, yeah. to any of the amendments, uh, to any of the minutes. So, if you so wish, do so. Well, I make a motion that my last three minute edits are accepted as is. Okay. Is there a second? Probably haven't read them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. Okay. So. Uh, I, I reread them today quickly because I get the three attachments. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay. I quickly read, I read them and quickly to make sure that I was precise. Precise in yeah. what I said. And I made comments on the four firemen that were being added. And I made comments on the, the manual that they want to create for 18,000 hours and so on and so forth. And I, I said, you know, that's how I feel about it. And uh, that's where I stand. Okay. Um, 30 seconds in, that means it's a, yeah, it's it's a dead issue. Not a motion. So, um, any other new business? Uh, seeing none. Oh, actually, I, I wanted to just say one thing since sure. I am going to be uh, moderating a panel discussion for Mindy Mesmer at the Lane Library on Thursday. I think it starts at 5 30. So, it's on PFCs, uh, the contamination in the water. They what call it the devil we know. What a heck of a topic that is, huh? Yeah, so she's having them all over the state, so she asked me to moderate the one in Hampton, so that is Thursday at the Lion Library, if anyone is interested. Okay, our next, we're all set on new business, there no other new business? Okay, great. Our ne the next budget committee meeting, which I will not be uh, officiating, is uh, March 19, uh, and as consistent with our other rule this year, Jerry, we do not make motions for adjournment. I simply proclaim we are adjourned, adjourned. and we are in fact adjourned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.